The lungs are the organs that allow you to breathe and are located in the thoracic cavity on either side of the heart and near the backbone. Their bases sit on the diaphragm and their apexes extend into the root of the neck. The lungs perform gastrial exchange in microscopic alveoli, extracting oxygen from the air and transferring it into the bloodstream while releasing carbon dioxide. The respiratory system can functionally be divided into a conducting zone and a respiratory zone. The conducting zone forms a continuous passage of air moving in and out of the lungs and this includes the nose, the pharynx, the larynx, the bronchi and the bronchioles. The respiratory zone is found deep in the lungs and is involved in the gaseous exchange. This includes the respiratory bronchioles the alveolar ducts and the alveoli, which are the air sacs wide enough to allow the gaseous exchange. The respiratory system can also be divided into the upper and the lower respiratory tracts. The upper respiratory tract consists of structures like the head and the neck, in other words, the nose, the pharynx and the larynx. The lower respiratory tract is located in the chest and this includes the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles, the alveolar ducts and the alveoli. The lungs weigh around 1.3 kilograms and contain around two and a half thousand kilometers of airways. The right lung is a little larger and heavier than the left one because the left one needs to leave room for the heart. The right lung is subdivided into three lobes while the left has just two. However, the left lung has a structure homologous to the middle lobe of the right lung. On the left lung, the upper lobe has a projection called the lingula. The boundaries of these lobes are defined by the fissures. The right lung has two fissures, one oblique and one horizontal, and the left lung has only one oblique fissure. The main or the primary bronchi enter the lungs at the helium, which is an area on the mediastinal surface of the lung through which the structures enter and leave the lung. These primary bronchi branch into the lobe or the secondary bronchi which supply air to each of the lobes of the lungs. The secondary bronchi then branch into the segmental or the tertiary bronchi which supply air to the bronchopulmonary segments which are again subdivisions of the lobes. The bronchopulmonary segment has its own segmental bronchus and arterial supply. The bronchi branch into the bronchioles. The primary lobe, otherwise called the acinus, is the functional unit of the lung. It is composed of a single terminal bronchiole, numerous respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs and around 10,000 alveoli. The pulmonary blood is delivered to it by a pulmonary arteriole and taken away by a pulmonary venule. The alveoli are where the gaseous exchange takes place. Their thick membranes form blood-air barrier. Together, 300 to 500 million alveoli in the lungs provide a huge surface area for the gaseous exchange. Elastic fibers allow the alveoli to expand on inhalation. These spring back to their original shape and position on exhalation to expel carbon dioxide. The lungs have a unique blood supply. They have two forms of circulation pulmonary and bronchial. The pulmonary circulation brings deoxygenated blood from the body to the lungs via the pulmonary arteries and returns it via the pulmonary veins. Meanwhile, the bronchial circulation provides oxygenated blood to the tissue of the lungs. The lungs have very specific indentations from the surrounding structures. The outer surface of the lungs faces the ribs, which make light indentations on them. The medial surfaces are even more interesting. We can see the impressions of the heart and the great vessels, which are the large vessels that bring blood to and take it from the heart. The lungs can't power the breathing process on their own, but they can only expand with the expansion of the thoracic cavity. Instead, the muscles of respiration primarily those in the diaphragm, drive breathing. The broad concave base of the lungs sits on the convex surface of the diaphragm. The intercostal muscles 
pull the rib cage upwards the respiratory muscles relax when you breathe out when you have breathed out the volume of remaining air in your lungs is called the functional residuary capacity which is around 2.5 to 3 liters in an adult when you have breathed out the volume of the air remaining in your lungs is called the functional residual capacity or the frc which is around 2 and a half to 3 liters in an adult when you exercise heavy breathing recruits accessory muscles in the neck and the abdomen pulling the rib cage down upon exhalation and further decreasing the volume of the thoracic cavity to around 1 liter the movement of the lungs encounters a little friction thanks to the pleural sac this sac divides the lungs into the lobes the pleura are two serous membranes one lining the inner wall of the rib cage and one resting on the surface of the lungs between these two membranes is the pleural cavity which contains the pleural fluid for lubrication